We're here in the woods today with uh, Dan Wilwack, Wilderness Skills Instructor, and we're talking about cordage and the kind of resources that we'll find here in the woods. Tell me about cordage and what you're going to use it for. So cordage is very valuable anytime you're around camp. Everything from making bundles of gear to shelter setups to different cook systems. Mm -hmm. So if we don't bring cordage with us or we only have a minimal amount of cordage, how are we going to use the resources around us to make cordage? The cordage you have there is made from inner bark of tulip poplar tree. It's a very good strong cordage. So we can take a look at actually how you process that and then make the cordage. Let's go find some tulip bark to make into cordage. So right here we have some tulip poplar. There's actually a small patch of it. If you look to identify tulip poplar tree, do you see how it looks almost like a cantaloupe and it has these chevron shapes up it? And what this actually is, is as the tree's growing, it wants to get up above the rest of the trees around it. So it's dropping its branches off. So that's an easy way to identify. But we have this piece here that's already starting to die off and is gonna fall over anyway. So we can very easily collect this bark in this situation. All that we need to do is just pull it right off the tree. See how these long strips come off. Right. So we can take this back to camp and process this down. And once we have this process down, we can use this cordage for anything from hanging kettles to lashing tripods to making other cook systems, even tying up any type of bundles of gear that we have. Mm -hmm. So it's just a good multi-purpose item to be able to make for things that we don't have out here. So we want the inner part of the bark, not the outer part the of the bark, correct? The inner part, correct. So once you start to work with this a little bit, right. you'll see that that outer bark starts to fall right off. Right. So that outer bark is no good, just that inner bark is all that we're looking for. What, what other kinds of trees can we use? Basswood is another good mm -hmm. choice. So anything that has long fibrous inner bark is gonna work okay. really, really well. And um, this has, this is dyed off. Is green gonna work? Green just will, as well. Yes, green will work just as well. If it's very dry, it doesn't break down as easily to be mm -hmm. able to get these long strands. So you actually want to re-wet that and it gives it some more moisture in it and then you right. can work with it a little bit more. So I imagine the green might be a little tougher to peel than something like this that's already you know, Yes, if you can tree. find this, it's just saving energy and saving resources and we just go ahead with the okay. stuff that's well, already dying let's off. Let's take this back to camp and work it up. Okay. So how do we turn this uh, stripped bark into cordage? Well, it's a very simple process. We can take this inner bark and you see it's already breaking down in numerous strands. Right. So we just pull these strands apart. I can hand you some and I'll okay. keep some myself. Now, initially we want to start to twist this, but we don't want to twist it dead center. We want to offset it. And that okay. comes into play a little bit later on. So like so, one third of the way in? Yeah, just one third mm -hmm. away and just start to twist it. Over. Any, am I twisting any, toward the long end or the short end? Any way you oh, want, because okay. we're okay. going to be using both. So okay. you just start twisting. And you're going to twist this until the cordage itself, the future cordage, starts to turn on itself. Now, to make this two-ply reverse wrap cordage, we want to turn one of these strands okay. in one single direction. So in my case, being right-handed, I'm turning this inward. Yeah, my natural inclination is go the opposite direction. Yes. So, okay. So once you get them twisted and they look round uh -huh. like this, at that point then you're gonna rotate both of them the opposite direction. So I was twisting to the left, we're gonna twist both of them to the right. So is it kind of good that our bark has already sort of broken down because it's a, per a certain age, it's been sitting on the forest floor and it's wet? Is that help? Wet's really gonna help because that's yeah. gonna give it more pliability. Mm -hmm. If it was really dry, you would want to wet it anyway. So right. you get a pot of water and just dip it in and let it get some moisture right. in it. And that's going to allow us to twist this down to nice cordage. Mm -hmm. So we need to splice in more pieces. And this is always going to happen throughout your entire cordage making process because we can't get an infinity piece of inner bark. So we could try. At some point, we're, <laughs> we're going to run short. So what we want to do is take the shorter end of the two and that's right. why we offset that so, at the beginning right because now we have a shorter end to splice so if it is twisted we want to untwist it and make it nice and flat and lay our second new piece right up against it right okay. up against that just like this and now we're going to continue our same process so i'm going to continue twisting and spinning so those two are just going to get twisted they're going up to get, together, and yep. then they're going to get twisted together with the other side, and that will splice that splice up Splice it in. Okay. Once you get going with it, your muscle memory really kicks in, and you just get a good rhythm with it. And then you're just grabbing your new piece, adding it in, and mm -hmm. going along with it. 
Now to vary your your thickness of your cordage that you're making, you just vary the thickness of the material you're using. So okay. if you need a thicker piece or a thinner piece, depending on whatever project you're making it for, mm -hmm. would depend on how much of the inner bark you actually gather. So have you ever tried doing it with three ply or? Yeah, so there's different techniques you can use with three ply that are a little bit more advanced, but um, majority of time, two ply is gonna be yeah. more than strong enough, as you can tell, right. for anything right. that we would need from tripod lashings to bundling up any kind of animal pelts right. to tying out gear. Right, and this seems uh, real flexible, real pliable. It's not yeah. real stiff. How does What's this like when it dries out? So it does stiffen up when it dries out. It's not extremely hard to the point that you can't still put knots and things mm -hmm. such as that in it. So I always tell individuals, if you use it, let's say to set up a shelter and it starts to dry out, you can always pour a little bit of water over that. It will soften it back up and you can pull it back out. Right. right. So what, you got a uh, two or three foot long piece? Yes. And how much do you think it'll weight? How much weight do you think it'll carry? Um, I would say at least 30, 40 pounds probably. Well, we got a so, pot here that's maybe, I don't know, it's probably a little less than 20. Okay, so I think this will have no problem picking yeah. that up. Yeah, no, no problem at all. That's, that's easy. They're pretty amazing stuff. Yeah, and if you think about it, if you're going to use something like that to support a water pot or you right. have to tie something off against a tree, it's more than enough tensile strength to be and able if, to do that. And if you really wanted to, you could just bundle two pieces Double together up, like that and, you and you've more. got twice as much. Yep. Yeah. The biggest thing you need to keep in mind is that your splices are going to be weak points. So you want to right. make sure that you splice enough together, not just a little bit. That way it's giving it more strength through that right. splice. Right. So you probably want to get as long a strip as you can to be twisting up yep. anyway. So you got fewer splices. Exactly. Right. And if you had three ply, you'd have, you could spread that splice strength out over a longer yep. distance too. Yeah. Yep. Amazing stuff. So uh, what's our other option for a uh, simple cordage? So there would be a lot of access to hides out on the frontier. So if we think about any type of brain tan, mm -hmm. buckskin, we can use that by making a simple few cuts. So what I have here is a piece of brain tan buckskin. Mm -hmm. And this would be something common, not only used for leggings, but moccasins. So the men out there would have scraps of this at times that they sure. can also do other things with. And we're gonna talk about making cordage with this because it's a very viable option. If initially you think about just cutting a thin strip, that's good, but you can see with this scrap piece, we can yeah. only get short strips and we gotta worry about knotting it. So another technique that we can use is by setting it down on something and taking our knife and cutting a circle. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle, just something circular. Okay, so once we have our circle piece cut, we can set our scrap off to the side and then all that we would need to do now is just begin to cut this in a spiral fashion. And that's mm -hmm. gonna give us a lot more length than just cutting it in single strips. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna just get in here and start with cutting a small strip open and then it's gonna be easiest to hold this and then begin to cut around. Now, depending on how thick we want our cordage, depends on how thick we're gonna make this piece. So you could see how much cordage we actually yeah, got from that, that, was just that a, little circle. Yeah. So you really can make a lot. But go ahead and give that a really good pull and see if you yeah, can. Yeah, so it's like, I could. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean no, really no, give no, it. I, yeah, I mean, you can really okay, pull it. Okay, you can, but you can. Wow, I would but say. But I mean, there was a lot of strength in right, there. Right, what do you think? To be able to pull that. Yeah. And normally uh, what happens with the brakes there mm -hmm. is because my knife might have went right. off a little bit. Got a little so something thin like that. Got a little thin. So. Right. Yeah. But but it doesn't have, I mean, it doesn't really have too much of a grain to it or anything nope. so that even when you cut in a circle, it's still going to be really strong. Right. So right. even tying out something like leggings, like you have yeah, yeah. some rope sure. there, yeah. you can use it like that. You'd be able to use it to tie up your bedroll. You can use it to tie up your tarp. Anything like that would work. And I suppose if you needed more strength, you could braid it together. Or you, yeah. could do, you could do a lot to get a really yep. heavy string. And this, this is brain tanned. You this could do it with um, rawhide. Yes. Or other other. Rawhide uh, was traditionally used for bowstrings, uh -huh. so you would cut the same process, cut it the same way with the round circle, right? Spiral, and then you would stretch it out while it's wet and twist it, and that would give you and your bowstring. Amazing strength there. Yes. I mean that's a lot of strength.
I want to thank Dan for bringing these wonderful skills and techniques to us, showing us how to make cordage in the in the backwoods, in when you don't have what you need and you need to make it. This is so much fun. And uh, uh, if you're interested in bushcrafting and learning these kinds of skills, you need to check out his website, Cold Cracker Bushcraft, and his YouTube channel. I'll make sure to put a link down in the description section to both of those. Thank you so much, Dan. Thanks. Thanks.